Hi, Michael. How's it going? Fine, how are you? Good, Always good. good talking to you. Yeah, you too. Well, we are here with Robert Smith today with uh, the Space Studies Institute. Thank you very much for joining us today. Anytime. So uh, your uh, title, I guess, is the evangelist for the Space Studies Institute. How does one become an evangelist for space? Uh, well, evangelist, I'm from the software industry, and evangelist, you know, Microsoft or Apple or anything like that, is really, it's the marketing person you're not afraid to pick up the phone for. You know, you're the marketing person, ah, uh, I'm not going to take that call. But evangelist is like, hey, this is somebody who has something interesting for me. And so that's what I'm supposed to be leading myself towards. As to whether I'm that right now for the Space Studies Institute, that's the goal. And it's a lofty goal. You name something and you become the name. So evangelist is a great goal for me to get, get to. And the Space Studies Institute has great stuff. And that's really what it's about. Do you want to know how I got into it? I mean, yeah. I can give you a real short because it's, it's a human story. It's a human story. <laughs> Please. All right. Last five years or so, I've been doing a lot of investigation and research on space. And space is big, you know, and Space Studies Institute is big too, but I didn't know, honestly, I didn't know anything about them. You know, you think you know everything, but space is big. And uh, as a researcher, you start looking for things, you get lots of books and lots of uh, films, even everything trying to get through. And uh, my office just got so packed with stuff that I said, I got to start thinning the herd, right? I hate to do this, but I have to. So I started digitizing. Well, then, when you start digitizing, I mean, I'm sure there are people that, that do the same sort of thing. You start digitizing. Now I have digital copies and the original stuff. So then it was, I got to get rid of this original stuff. Right? And I don't want to just sell it, because that would make me a hypocrite, complaining all these years about how people sell these things for too much. But if I sell it for too cheap, someone's going to buy it too cheap and then sell it for too much. You know, am I boring you? No. OK. And then, so I, I called the Planetary Society, because I'm a member for a long time, was a member for a long time, and they have a nice place in Pasadena. I drove over there, standing in the library. Sorry, Bill Nye, but if you're my neighbor, if you come to my house, you, you, you convince me why you need my money, personally. Because I walked in there thinking, this is a place for researchers. That's what I thought I was paying for. And I'm in this beautiful room. It's, like, it's even more beautiful than this, with the dark woods and everything. And it's a library. And I said, Who's, who takes care of your library? And the nice, ni they're nice people, good people, said, uh, what library? I'm like, well, you know, as a member, can you, you can come in here and read these books. Oh, well, this is where we just hold our meetings. And I am not trying to down the Planetary Society. I'm just giving you the God's honest truth of I'm trying to find a good place for my stuff for researchers. And they said, no, nah, 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 it's not going to. So I was driving home from back to L.A., and I think, oh, the British Interplanetary Society. Whenever you're in London, you're a member, you can go in, and, and they have an awesome library. But it kind of started, I was trying to find something in America. I mean, it's leaders of human spaceflight, according to the perception, leaders of space, where is it? No, I, and I couldn't find it. So I'm boxing the things up to send to London at that price. And then I, I'm doing this High Frontier magazine from the, from the 90s, which I had never heard of, but I... I it came across my desk, and I said, hey, this is pretty good. Not Star Trek, not High Frontier, uh, Final Frontier. And you go, oh, it's a Star Trek thing. It's not. There's this great magazine. It's nice. And there's an interview with Gerard K. O'Neill, you know, with the Beatles haircut and everything. I knew the name. I knew it because when I was about 13 years old, I remember on CBS had the 60 Minutes thing, which you can't find anywhere to watch again because maybe my perception is wrong. But here's the perception I got out of that. I wanted to see it because I was into space. But what I got out of it at the end was, ew, creepy, because Dr. Timothy Leary, Timothy Leary's dead, you know, the hippie stuff guy was on it, and a bunch of you know, hippie people. And, and I merged the two things in my head early on. So whenever I thought of Gerard K. O'Neill, didn't want to know about it, OK? But anyway, I'm reading this article, and I start seeing things, space, solar power, which to me is Ralph Nansen and G. Harry Stein. I had already been introduced to this important stuff and realized it was important, realized it was real um, from real people. And then he's talking about you know, the, 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 the things of taking expendable, the, the, the rockets from the space shuttle, and instead of dumping them, turning them into HABs. I'm going, hey, that's John McLucas, head of the NRO and secretary of the Air Force, and a list like this, first Arthur uh, Z. Clark Award winner. And the guy knows his stuff. And I remember he, re so these things had already been presented to me from sources I trusted. But now I'm looking and going, hey, the dates are this guy had it first. 
And I already had a deep respect for Dandridge Cole, which is a hard thing to get. Everyone quotes him, but no one's actually read the original stuff from the 1960s, including 1962 Space World magazine, Macro Life, which is awesome. You can't find it. I have it. You know, and, and we hope to make these things available. So I'm taking the long story short, I, mean, I get excited, you see, so evangelist. But it's about important stuff. And so anyway, I go, well, maybe I misjudged this guy, O'Neill. And I looked around and I said, no, it's, it needs something called the SSI. Are that still around? And I check SSI. It's a web page pops up. Executive Director Robin Stelson keeps a blog, a blog on there. And one of the things was, donate your space-related things. I said, well, OK. And I sent an email. She sends it back. She says, you're in LA. We're up in the Mojave Spaceport, which is an awesome place. I mean, stunning place. And I'm like, God, they're right there. So I drove up. Robin meets me. You know, we have coffee in the Voyager. Good coffee, uh, excellent chili. This is important stuff to me, okay? I can't eat at like Colombo's old places for chili anymore. The Voyager's so good. Anyway, she brings me up into the, opens the door of the, the office in the library. And there's this stuff. And it's stunning, because I, I know my books, and I know my resources, okay? I'm looking going, that's 250 bucks. That I can't afford, but I, w I know it is. That you can't buy anywhere. Like, this should be read. She's like, we know. We're thinking, how can we get this out to people? How can we, you know, and I said, I got a book digitizer. And that's how it started. But you see how excited I get? I, I'm, I'm not doing it, you know, to offend anybody. But I get excited about this because the Space Studies Institute has been going since 1977. And O'Neill was not a moron, and he wasn't a hippie dude. He knew his stuff. And the people actually did. This is engineers. This isn't all theory stuff that SSI. And the L5 Society, which is also a spinoff of the O'Neill, uh, stuff. The L5 Society merged with Werner, uh, 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 Werner von Braun's National Space Institute in 1986. They are excellent advocates, and they make the ISDC, which is a, the show of shows. Okay, but they do advocacy. Space Studies Institute, it's not as big in, because it's engineers and scientists and researchers actually doing stuff, not doing politics, and that makes them a little more low key. But man, from a research point of view, they've got stuff. And so my job as an evangelist is to tell people what they have and to make it available for people, for members, senior associates, associates, you know, and not to make it difficult because we don't want to, we have to have a bar, you know, because it's a library, but we don't want to raise the bar so high that, again, because the point is to get it out there. So if any of this isn't boring people and people are going, oh, what an idiot this guy is, the main thing is it's not about me, it's not about the, this guy. You know, it's, Space Studies Institute has the stuff, a lot of times, robotics, in, in uh, situ resource utilization, large-scale construction, pump design, electronics, nanotechnology, a spinoff of O'Neill. All this stuff that sometimes you go to these things and you go, for years they've been saying, why doesn't somebody do, somebody do in the next year? Why doesn't somebody do this? Why doesn't a lot of this stuff has been done, and I find a lot of it at the Space Studies Institute library. And as an evangelist, my job is to not only say, it's got it, and make you go, I wonder if they got what I'm looking for. But also, the hard stuff is for me to make it available. So if you go to SSI.org, you will see that a growing number of the things, and I showed today in the presentation that a lot of the stuff is already digitized. It's on my computer right here. But to make it available, and to make it securely available for researchers. All right? And we did announce today that as of yesterday, the high frontier Jared K. O'Neill's real book, as Tomlinson says, the book. You've got to read the book. Well, you can read the book. It's now digital. It's on Kindle. I spent the last couple of weeks making it digital. It looks fantastic. It's got the uh, second edition Pat Rawlings cover, the color, which looks good even on the old Kindle devices, the black and whites. It's got the Don Davis artwork and the schematics, drawings, and everything, and they look awesome. But it, it, and Kindle, of course, runs on everything, Windows, Mac, iOS, Android. And it's out there. It's already there. It's a nominal charge. Amazon takes their big cut. You know, we get the royalty, and everything from that goes into the more research. Everything goes back into SSI. Um, but we're also working on, so this is the thing. I don't know, when you, when's your timing of the release of this? Uh, anywhere from like three to six weeks. OK. Well, keep looking at it, because there are times that Amazon will allow us to, uh, to make good, really cool promotional discounts on it. Okay, so if you check back, you know, there's a RSS, a newsreader thing on the top of the SSI.org, and I invite people to go to SSI.org and set that. And so when we figure out how to make the good promotion stuff, you know, you'll get an update on it, and you can go and get it for even less. But $6.99 is not a darn bad price. And it really is 
I had to come around from the, it's like a, a heathen being reborn, evangelist, you know? I found out that uh, Gerard K. O'Neill was not this creepy guy, and what he was saying was not bizarre, and was not out there. It actually was a planned scientific engineering process, and it's cool stuff. And I hope people, I hope people uh, check out SSI.org and hopefully become members because they're going to be amazed by what they see. It's like it's the library is like the last scene of Indiana Jones, you know, all these boxes. It's like here it is. We have it, and we're very proud to get it to people.